Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Smoochie Town. Wow, I want to thank Purple Banter, Kati, and LJ for producing this bad boy, as well as Happy Dad, because guess what? I do have a Happy Dad, but I like these more, because they just make your gullet go down so easy. Before we get to our very special guest today, and you'll probably recognize him from a little show called Fuck Boy Island, maybe the king of it, it's the drop of the week. And surprise, 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 another dating app story. And I wanted to venture out from Raya this time because those girls on there, all they want is money and want to know what your sign is. And then it's money. So I'm a rising asparagus. Uh, I downloaded Hinge. You know, I wanted to play the field a little bit, see what else is out there. You know, get to know these girls on a real deeper level than surface. So I took a girl out to none other than Barney's Beanery. Oh, reliable. I cannot go there without getting recognized by the patrons there. And it's not a good date spot, at least for me. However, she lived close there, right? And uh, well, towards the end of the night, we're going to Smoochy Town in one of the booths. And I was like, do you want to go back to your place? You know, my roommate was in town at the time. So I don't want to like bring it back, make it a threesome situation. Uh, and then she was like, ah, it's my place is a little messy. And I was like, oh, I don't mind. I'll clean it up for you. Call me, call me Spick and Span, baby. And she said, can you do it shirtless? So I was like, oh, okay. Uh, say less. I went to the gym that day. So we go back to her place and her roommate was home, ironically enough, too. Uh, we go into her bedroom and I was like, all right, I'm gonna go freshen up in the bathroom, pop the shirt off, make a big entrance, you know, and then I'll get to cleaning, cleaning. And I come out of the bathroom about a few minutes later, I had some gas, I had to pass and she's sleeping in her bed, messy floor. Now I'm a man of my word. Okay. So I still cleaned her entire bedroom for 30 minutes, and then I got out of there. No smoochy town for Del Vecchio. Let's go. All right. That's the drop of the week. And here comes one of my favorite people in the world. We go back probably eight years since, we first, uh, since I first moved here. We were in a group chat called The Degenerates, and now we're on a podcast called Smoochy Town. Everyone, welcome the biggest fuckboy in fuckboy island history, Garrett Morosky. <laughs> Too, bro. Thank you for having me here. Man. I haven't seen you in a minute. We used to be pretty close. We used to go yeah. out regularly when I first moved here. Uh, hold for Happy Dad, Chug. Yeah. Do you bro. like it? Banana Dude, flavor? Banana's fire. Right? Yeah, it reminds me of little Laffy Taffy's from back in the day, bro. When I was a kid, banana was my favorite. Really? Oh, yeah. I got sick of them, though. I could have a couple and then. Banana was my favorite. Like, you... same with the runts, bro. Runts, I'd always go for Yeah, banana. bro. When you get like a few Fun. of them in the bag, that was the golden yeah. bag, bro. Maybe, maybe I should take back my dick sucking statement. Too many bananas. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so whose dog is this? What, where, where, it's how long? You know, this, uh, this dog is a symbol, man, of me maybe, maybe being reformed. Reformed you know? F boy. Yeah, bro. So it's my girl's dog. Um, her name is Myla. Our girl's name is Ashley. Congratulations, um, dude. How yeah, long have you been together, dating? Been together for like eight months, bro. It's the first girl I've never cheated on. So, it's First girl you never cheated? You heard it here first. Hey. Is this fucking fuckboy reformed? I don't know. I might be, bro. The pussy's good. The pussy's good. Okay. <laughs> I want to go to F-Boy Island real quick. So you possibly made the TV history and being one of the only guys to take the money off of Fuckboy Island, the $100,000 prize. I mean, like long story short, like my mom gave birth to me when she was like 17. And then the Russian doctors like took her away, took me away. I'm like, your baby's dead. And she's like, well, can I see my baby and hold him? And they're like, no. And then they what? just sold me on the black market. It's a, it was a pretty common thing like in the early 90s. And that's why they stopped like Russian like uh, adoptions. I think like in like 96, 97. Really? They're just stealing people's babies. Bro, Russia's fucked, bro. So it's not even your mom's fault. No. So you, it's not a forgiveness thing, but like, do you have a good relationship with your mom now? And does she want one with you? Like, how she is wants that? one with me, but like, I just like, what am I gonna do? I don't speak Russian. Like, my adopted sister does, so she like will reach out and like talk. And it's like, I've asked questions about my dad, and she's married with like three three kids, and I've asked questions about my dad, and she's just like, he was an asshole. He gets angry, and I'm like, like, okay, okay. Can you elaborate? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, what was he like? She's like, I don't want to talk about it. And I'm like, yo, you're like 50 years old or like 45 years old with three kids and a new husband. Like, like what? Yeah. But bro, like their life is fucked out there. Like whenever the Russian Ukraine stuff happened, like she sent a message and was like, I can't talk to you until all of this stuff like subsides. Um, if they know that we're talking to anyone like in America, like they'll come to our house and shoot us. 
Yeah. Wow. So was it an American family that visited Russia and wanted to adopt a Russian specimen? Because you were 6'3", 215, full yeah, of fucking bro. juice, let me tell you, buddy. Wow. Yeah, my parents got lucky, I guess, on that one. Yeah. But again, like, you, you know, you... I think that, you know, it evens out. Like, my sister, for example, who's adopted, like, she has a lot of health issues. Like, she's deaf. Oh, no. Yeah, she has a lot of, like, health issues just in general. Like, her story for adoption was completely fucked. So how does she talk to your dad? What do you mean? How does she talk to her dad? Uh, What do you mean? So she was, like, so her hearing whenever she was, like, young got progressively worse, like, by the age of 10. So then she needed, like, cochlear implants. She had her head split open four times for them. Oh, wow. And, like, she's... I mean, just, I mean, you can talk on like yeah. messages and stuff like that. So she found like some Russian Facebook and was able to find them that no way. No way. Yeah, Do you have a good relationship with your adopting parents? Yeah, they're the best things. Bro. Hell like, yeah. My dad and my mom are my superheroes, bro. Really? They're the shit, bro. Like my dad's the coolest dude ever. How was growing up in Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh was sick, dude. Like really? I love Pittsburgh. Yeah. Where I was from was like a small, like preppy little area called Fox Chapel. Okay. And like, bro, we just got down. Like we, it was kind of like, like I got, I got, a, I got, um, <clears throat> paddled whenever I was like a freshman in high school. By your parents? No, by like <laughs> by, by, by like the seniors. Have you ever seen Days and Confused with like McConaughey, bro? I've seen the one scene that's like, all right, all right, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, but no, we got paddled and shit like that by the seniors, and like it was just a different ball game, bro. Like you know how LA is here, like very like can be high school in a certain way with like status and this yeah. and that. Like bro, my high school was like that, bro. Like it was like everything that I experienced out here is like. So your high school experience was like a movie high school experience. Yes. It okay. Was, it was fucking awesome. Bro. Were you a cool kid? I happened to be, uh, you know, happened to be, uh, yeah, bro. You were? Yeah. Did you play sports? Yeah. What'd you play? Baseball. I played football my freshman year, um, but baseball is my sport. Then I went and played college baseball. Well. Yeah. You were a pitcher in college, right? And you were a frat yeah. boy? Yeah. 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 That's cool. But yeah, no, my high school, man, like, uh, I mean, yeah. You moved to LA I, right I, I after college. I, I did what I did in high school, bro. What does that mean? I don't know. Me and my boy, me and like probably like two of my boys. I mean, we were like the coolest kids in school. So it's like. Let's go. I was yeah. too. I went to Old Boys Catholic High School though. So I had no class. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, I was student body president for the football team. Yeah. Pittsburgh was different though. Like we would go to like other people's schools and like steal their girls. So like. So you're doing the same. Th so it's just ingrained in your brain. So yeah, you just keep doing it. It's a habit, bro. Yeah. And like I had cousins that went to different high schools. So like I'd go to their parties and they're all around the same age. So like I would steal their girls too. If like from different like. Yeah. Would you get off to stealing the girl? Yes, bro. Because I was. A, so like eighth, eighth grade, bro. Like this girl like broke my heart. And. My, my, <laughs> she didn't give you the red starburst? So listen, the no, no. My boy, my boy George Marsico, he was like, listen, like Ali's talking to this kid, C. Will is like, you should break up with her. I didn't realize he only wanted me to break up with her because he was like, he was like one of my best friends. So he just didn't want me to be with a girl. So he made up some elaborate story and I believed him. So like at the end of like school in eighth grade, I went up to this girl's locker and I was like, listen, we're done. It's over. Like I heard what you did. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, and she was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I heard what you did. George told me. I'm leaving and I didn't elaborate on anything. And then from there, bro, like, yeah, there was a phase in my life where it was like, I'm just going to like hook up with every single hot chick and steal all my bro boys, girls. And like, it was like, even your closest boys, some of my closest boys and it didn't end well, dude. I just didn't give a fuck. Now, bro, like I wouldn't even follow my girls, like my boys, girls. Yeah. Cause I'm so like ashamed when I look back on it. I'm like, bro, like I was a shithead. Like I was a piece of shit. Like what am I doing, bro? Yeah. Now, like, I won't even, fall. like, it's just like a, I've changed, bro. Listen, I've changed. That's awesome. Yeah. Pet Milo. Fucking I've changed. changed. Uh, so you moved to LA right after college, right? And you got the yeah. acting itch from a class you took in college? Yeah. 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 How do you know about that? I don't know, man. Did you research? Yeah. <laughs> no, I did, bro. It was like a class where, because I played sports. I, like, I didn't really, it's in this class with a bunch of people that I'm like, who the fuck are you guys? And, like, I ended up meeting this girl. Her name was Autumn Parker. And, like. Autumn, that's a, that sounds like a fucking porn name. No, she, was just, <laughs> she was just this cool, this cool cat, and like I had to run lines with her, and I was. She just kind of like, she opened up a side of myself that wasn't like trying to just be like this cool kid and like just this and that. Like she opened up a different side of myself where I was like able to be like exposed a little bit to like just different emotions and things like that. Like where I was kind of a cold person. Like you know, Russian people are cold. Like I was cold, dude. Very so little emotion. The abandonment issues When did you Because at two years old You wouldn't know you're adopted No Unless your parents told you So how was that A process of like Your parents telling you that I just kind of knew 
And then the abandonment issues. <laughs> Your parents black. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> I just kind of, I just kind of knew. But no, then the abandonment issues, man. Like, it was, uh, bro. Like, it was just after cheating on every girl I've ever been with, ever. I was like, something's got to change. Like, I'm breaking all these girls' hearts, and like the last girl, like, I fucking destroyed her, and I was just like dude like you're a shithead and going on fy and kind of changed that for me as well it once, did once i saw like the cuts that i was given i was like whoa 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 like i was such a lover boy in here it was insane like you gave casey the best cut ever and i even told him i was like why is casey's cut so good he said outlandish shit that like you guys like didn't air you only aired like the shit that i said that was ridiculous you're the epitome of the fuck boy and then they, well they told me they're like well he just couldn't handle it like when it came out like he wouldn't be able to handle it like he's just more of a small town kid like he wouldn't be able to handle it and i was like but they don't know your fucking past necessarily no but they just yeah they, they just kind of knew i'm telling you they, they know bro like i'm telling you when they do those personality tests they know more about you than you think really like, that yeah. psychological test the psychological three? evals like i'm telling you like they know shit just in general do you go to therapy now years. um i kind of stopped going to therapy i went to therapy after like my last relationship because i was like listen like i'm breaking all these girls hearts and like i'm a dick like i clearly ha have like severe abandonment issues because i can't fully connect to a certain degree and i'm always looking for like you know with the grass is greener and stuff like that um which is a good thing because like now i found someone that i'm like damn like she's so hot like it's insane like it's great you keep saying she's hot what else do you value about her <laughs> <laughs> no nah, she uh she, she's just a good girl like she's just such a sweet girl like she's just selfless like very selfless like she'll do a lot for me like, bro, like she's funny she's cute like um what's your favorite thing about her she just I'm so selfish. It's insane. So like, she allows me to like kind of still be selfish and like, like she'll like, she doesn't know. judge you. No, she doesn't really judge me. And like, also like when I tell her stories about my past, like she doesn't, it doesn't even like, it doesn't really phase her to a certain degree. That's like, she's nice. like, okay, like I get it. Like you're a piece of shit. Yeah. So like, what does yeah. she do? Is she a therapist? <laughs> no, 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 no. She does her own little thing. Yeah, nice. Yeah, she does OnlyFans. She crushes. Oh, let's go. Yeah. So the sex is good too. That's great. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite sex position? Oh damn! The first thing that came to my mind was like doggy, but like that's not really my favorite. I no, I, need, I like the idea of it, but like, I like it. In like certain, I like the idea of doggy and like sexiness and porn aspect of it, but I want to see your face. I want to like make love. Yeah, I'm a lover, bro. I care, bro. Yeah, you care too much. <laughs> I don't really care about that. I care about like, honestly, like I like, I love like looking in the mirror and just like fucking her while I'm looking in the mirror, bro. Like I'm a kinky. Looking at you? Yeah. Be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> bro, like I like. I like looking at myself like, while fucking. I like, I like watching myself fuck her, bro. Like straight up. Do I'm you like, watch yourself masturbate too in the mirror? <laughs> there was actually a time. No way. <laughs> no, not really. But, um. <laughs> Do you nah, still jerk off? Not a lot, bro. See, I'm twice a day now. Cause like, <laughs> no, like me, like maybe like once every like two, three months. Cause it fucks me up, bro. Two, three months. Like, bro, if I'm like really like, if I like when I would like do, when I'd watch porn a lot, bro, like I just, bro, I'll then like have this girl with like toys. I'll like grab her toys. I'll be putting one in her ass while I'm fucking her, the other in her mouth. And like, how are they like, getting gangbang like little fucking slut? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> And I'm sick like that. So it's like once I get down there, I'm like, bro, these girls then like, they, bro, they get fucking, they can't handle it. Even though they, they act like they can they handle act, it. They always act like it. They can't handle it. You'll then see like it psychologically fucks them up. Like in every girl I've ever been in a relationship with, they're like, like you fucked me up. Like, like, listen. Because like, they're never going to have as good a sex as they did with you? Potentially. Yeah, maybe. How much like, are you packing down there? Like, what are you packing? Oh, I'm packing a nice, I'm packing some nice heat, bro. Yeah, a little seven piece? A little, yeah. I'm five and a half. But like, I'm, I'm, uh, get some Russian sausage, bro. So Russian Ru and Polish people were kind of blessed a little Kibasa? bit. Kibasa? Is that Russian sausage? I, think, I don't know, something like that. I get a little Come pierogi. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you acted for two years before a girl. And the expense of a girlfriend made you look for a more stable job. I was acting for probably like three years. And yeah, bro. Well, you remember Liberty, bro. When I was with Liberty. Yeah. She was like, don't act. That's when I had my first Wait. I had my first movie that came out on Amazon, bro. It was a horror movie. Fucking sucked. Um, <laughs> like, she, Everyone go watch it. Yeah, it was called Real Nightmare. 
but like i mean the post post-production was trash but it was my first like like big like thing so i was doing a bunch of feature films things like that and i was like all right cool like i'm a i'm a lead in this with this other chick i was yeah. playing a stereotypical high school jock and uh yeah bro lib was like she was just like you shouldn't act like acting's for like losers or all those kids that act are like kind of like weird. she's models exactly and like i just realized that it was one of those things where it was like the movie came on amazon and it was more like oh you're st like stealing shine like you know you're like you just oh like, she didn't want like, you to yeah, be the like, main yeah, star of the relationship yeah exactly so she put you put you down and that's no yeah, way to have and I you should build each other up in a relationship exactly and i didn't really look at it like that at the time i did so much for the girl she did a lot for me too but like it's just it, yeah it was young love yeah now how how like did you start because acting I don't know if you were necessarily making that much money, but I'm assuming uh, based on your lifestyle and such, and we've had talks, like you're doing pretty well for yourself. Yeah. How, where did that start? Was it investing into crypto? Like what, yeah, or did so, you, because you went to school for business and math lived yeah. in China for, yeah. right? Yeah, bro, you're all on it. <laughs> so I, I went out to China for a couple of years and I learned from one of my good buddies, John Frizzani, bro. He had this company called G Tech. You ever seen the like, you know, Tom Brady put his hands in the hand warmer and click a button and it turns on. Yeah. He created that company. So I went out to China for a little bit. We were manufacturing these like um, heated wearables when we were out there for like your back and stuff like that. And I just made some good connections out there in China. And like, bro, like right when we got back, it was like COVID. And all of a sudden I found like all this like, like randomly, I get a call from my, my apartment building and they're like, listen, like the entire like room, it's a plaza. They're like the entire room has uh, like mail in it for you. And I walked in there and I was like, the fuck are these boxes? So I was carrying these boxes back and it was like fucking gowns and face masks and like rubber gloves and all this shit. And it was just PPE. And I was like, I don't need this shit. So I like gave it to all these doctors in LA. I was like, listen, if you need any of this medical stuff, like here you go. They're like, sure, we'll take it. And then probably like two months later, COVID was like a thing. And then they hit me back and they're like, listen, like we need, like it was, bro, it was like gobs on my side. They're like, we need a ton of that. Like we need like a hundred thousand face masks. So, okay, cool. I was like, how much are the face masks to like different people? Like that I knew I like 50 cents. So I was like, here, you want it for two bucks? <laughs> and I was like, all right, here you go. Like, so you resold COVID yeah. safety supplies Yeah, I made it for good. 400%. 100% though. So COVID was good for you. It was good for me, but I also donated a fuck ton of COVID stuff too. That's I awesome. donated more than I, than I made. Oh, that's fantastic. Which was good. And all the time, like, you could mark up your COVID stuff. So, like, when you're getting masks and stuff like that, you're like, cool, like, here's a million masks. Like, that's $4 million tax deductible. Oh, wow. So, it was great. You're just a businessman. So, from there, I invested in a couple companies. Still, none to this day have fully paid out. One of them was, like, like one of them was, like, a really good friend. And, like, they got acquired, and we still haven't seen the, seen the money from that. But from there, like... I was doing a bunch of other stuff and kind of right now I'm in this spot where like just now things are really starting to come to fruition again on stuff that I want to do. My ultimate goal, man, is to create like a designer athleisure line. So I want to go back out to China and kind of create like, think of like John Elliott and Amiri mm -hmm. meet like kind of like a Mitchell Ness Nike okay, and like create something sick. Cause like right now, bro, like bro, Nike, Adidas, ASRV, like, Lululemon, Aloe Yoga, like bro, these brands are trash. Like they're trash. Like I, like I hate wearing the workout gear that people have now. Yeah, like, Viore, like girl stuff is good. Like girls like Aloe, girls Lulu. That's, Aritzia. I don't even know what that is. Me either. My but ex like, wore it. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but like that stuff is good for girls. But like guys, like we don't have like that swag where it kind of brings back that old school, like you know, where you have like you know. Just to say, like, you know, a cut off, like, like Arnold days, kind of his shit's still too cheesy, bro. Like, they're still wearing too, their stuff's too tight, like crop top, like a little like, crop, you top have a crop top on there, but like, where you then have, like, let's think of, like, you know, um, what is it, the Don King or the Mitchell Ness, like, jersey shorts, mm. or like the, you know, the John Elliott, like, shorts that they have, they're yeah. fire, bro, but like, they still, their cuts are still a little bit cheesy yeah but like kind of taking that and making it like its own swag mm. have you ever seen like eric emmanuel yeah like his shorts like brother the trashiest there's i don't know how they crush so do you have that creative eye or are you viewing it as a business sense 
uh, creative, like the market's cre- there. Creative eye for me. You know, I love the gym, bro. Yeah. And I played every sport under the sun growing up. Like I played football, baseball, basketball, tennis. Dude, I'll take ball. the jacket off. I'll take the jacket off right now. Show yeah, the guns. Man. The guns, the veins are out and popping. I saw them earlier. I think it's a little hotter in here, maybe. Oh, someone turned on the AC. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are out. Come on. <sighs> Yay, there we go. Oh. This dude's vascular is fuck. It's like I took a Cialis, bro. <laughs> bro, have you so I won't take have you taken a blue rhino from look at those things. Look at those things, bro. Cause you're on test two, right? Yeah, I just started. Just started. I've been on testosterone I just for started again. I was doing it for a little bit and then I went off for a little bit because I was like, I want to do some like boxing and stuff. And then I tore my my shoulder. I have like three tears in my shoulder, so you just gotta be careful. Yeah, what's your uh workout regimen? You know, do you just go in and lift? Because I still use my same football dynamic warm up. Yeah. And I still lift like heavy ass weight. Like I won't go higher than I like can't eight. be doing that. No? No. Not anymore. Even though that's what I do every day. Yeah. I ego lift, man. Still this day. Bad form. Great form. But I ego lift. Like I curl like 60 pound dumbbells. I don't look How? like I do, but I just have, bro, I have freak strength. I'm telling you. I really? Have, yeah, I have that autism strength, bro. <laughs> I, I got, got that tiz. I got that every time strength. <laughs> Little Tizzy McGuire. <laughs> yeah, straight up. So, yeah, no, I just, no, I just, I don't know. It's not smart. It's not smart. Like if I want longevity, like I need to be doing yoga. Like, bro, I can't even like touch my toes, bro. Really? Like, I can like putting on my shoes is a struggle at times, which I hate. It's embarrassing. So you're going straight for I'm aesthetics. About you're it, going though. for aesthetics. Yeah. But now I'm at a point where I'm like, I would rather look lean in like, like I don't like I already know like I don't have like the prototype to have like just giant fucking arms unless I want to go take Trent and D ball and like just be yeah. whatever juice head. And like I play too many sports now where it's like I want to get good at golfing. Like I can't. Have you Jake, can play that forever, bro. I can't have Jake Mass out here beating me in golf. Shout out Jake bro. Mass, dude. You're one <laughs> a hell of a golfer, bro. I played with him in a tournament. He just carried the scramble tournament. <laughs> What's his laugh like again, bro? <laughs> Bro, you just seem so easy high all the time. Shout, we love you, Jake Mass. Yeah, I miss all the boys, bro. Yeah, bro, we had a crew back in the day. I know. We were fucking idiots, dude. We were just degenerates. We were degenerates. It's crazy to see, like... I have a crazy degen story for you, by the way. I would love that, bro. I ever tell you that I smashed two of the Beverly Hills Housewives? <laughs> and then, and then Time I- out, time out, time out. One second. <laughs> we're going to cut this. I just need to go to the bathroom real quick. Bro, no way. Yeah. I know one of them. And then I shook, and then I shook her her husband's hand after. I know exactly what you're talking about. Bro, what is it? I can't say names. I mean, okay. Just be really descriptive. Yeah. But Marco knows. He'll probably say the name. But it was her and her friend. They were both on the show. Beverly Hills. Yeah, Beverly Hills Housewives. From way in the day. <laughs> I fucked her in her husband's bed. Stop. Yeah, and her friend. Yeah. They came over midday and we I'll tell you the story. The name Scripture. What's that? The name Scripture. I can't tell you. Come on. Has to, Beverly Hills Housewives? Yeah, yeah, two of them. Both really? of them. Yeah. yeah it was. <laughs> two of them. She's like a supermodel, right? Yeah, she's the fucking Did she still meth, she's a supermodel? meth she's a meth head now. My lush. You will not bark. Yeah, fuck it, bro. Of course. This is my week. You're like lucky. This is like my week of being a complete degenerate. Like, this is my week of just going out, bro, and just it's like Hall- it's Halloween weekend, bro. It's Bender Central like every day of this week. Like I'm gonna be a starting dumb. tonight, kind of. Starting tonight, yeah. And starting, then starting goes, right now. Starting right now. <laughs> uh, Barney's is Tuesday night. Dude, you have to come to Barney's. I'll go Tuesday night because I'm not going to Tao. Oh, it's the actual Halloween night? Bro, in the parade. It's I'll go Tuesday I'll night. go I'll go Tuesday night. Tuesday night. I already have a table and shit. Done. It's insane. Done? I'll come. Oh, yeah, where am I going? Alright, cool. Alright, so reality TV. Yeah, so we're gonna get, we're gonna get into Yeah, back three. to reality TV. Two. Wait, so what'd you fuck? Wait, what? <laughs> I'm surprised you don't know, but like whenever we were in our DJ's day, bro, like I took down two of the Beverly Hills Housewives. Was one of them Carlton? And and uh, <laughs> and I shook their husband's hand after. 
Wait, you had a threesome with him? Yeah. No way. Yeah, her and one of her friends, who's also on the show, midday. Water. Midday. Yeah, and her kid was there, in in her husband's bed. Yeah. Where was? Do you think we the got, husband was a cuck and knew about we it? We got blacked out, bro. Drinking. This Casamigos. Casamigos. Free plug. Blanco. Um, and she called it over, and we were just getting fucked up, and then we were just like all making out, like all throughout the house, like her and her friend. Went to the movie theater room, everything like that. And then we ended up going upstairs and I ran them both raw, bro. Yeah. And then after that, and then after that, I went in the back and was jumping on a trampoline with like her kid and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> bro, it was the most ridiculous. Yeah, thing. I know exactly who you're talking about. And uh, we'll, like, cut bro, out, like, we'll cut out who it was. Playing playing on their like slide and stuff like that. Like everything, like riding like this little like cart around. It was so cheese. And then all of a sudden her husband shows up comes over and i'm like fuck like what do i do and she's like just say that you're like a real estate agent here like checking out the house and at the time i was doing some real estate so i was like okay cool like I'm those that, those that. acting classes paid off and I, was, and I was just like oh you know, it gets even worse than this so then i shake his hand and i'm like i'm like yeah hey, nice to meet you we're just checking out the house you know we're just seeing what we want to do for photography and stuff like that because they're moving <laughs> just you know what kind of shoots we want to bring in here I shook his hand and i left Bro, I get a text message from him on my phone saying, I'd love to meet you. Come meet up with me in Beverly Hills. I want to chat with some business and stuff like that. Like, I might have some stuff for you. So I'm like, oh, shit. Like, this is a plus. Like, not only did that just smash your wife and, <laughs> and her friend who also, yeah. Um, I'm going to get some business out of this. So I go to this. I go to this. Uh, remember my cousin, Steven Snowball? He's living with me for a little yeah. bit. So I go to this dinner. This is the first time I've ever told this story. So I go to this dinner and I go to the restaurant in Beverly Hills and I text my cousin. I'm like, like, I'm just going to the dinner right now. Like, I'll hit you in a little bit. And I walk into dinner and I'm like, hey, what's up, man? How's it going? And he's like with this dude who's like, looks like he's like secret service. And he's like, hey, man, like sit down. And he's like, listen, if you ever come around my family or my kids ever again, my buddy right here will take care of you. And he's like, we know your family. We know everything about you. Because you know he owns like a big like. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? And he's like, now get out of here. And I'm like thinking like, oh, I'm going to get fucking like cooked when I walk out of here. So yeah. I text my cousin as I'm leaving. I'm like, listen, like if I die, like just tell my parents this is who like hired a hit on me. And then I like walked out, sprinted down to like the, cause it was like right near like the montage, the old montage at the time. So yeah. I was like parked, parked in there, sprinted down to the garage and like got my car and just whipped out and was like, bro, yeah. that is fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Nuts. Did you ever Nuts. see the housewife again? No. She would hit me up and like, actually, no, there was another time after that. You fucking <laughs> <laughs> there was, but no, this is even worse, bro. So you I'm risked at, it? I was at the Mahondra. You called his bluff. And you're like, I'm a fucker again. No, bro. <laughs> listen, I kept telling her, no, no, no. She paid me five racks. Now we're getting to somewhere. come to the Mondrian Hotel, spend the entire like night with her. All of a sudden, like middle of the night, like I don't know if it was a full moon or what, bro. Like I hear something in the bathroom, and like it's her like crying, bro. And like, bro, she's cutting her wrist with a broken bottle that she was drinking out of the mini fridge, and like trying to cut herself. And she's like, drink my blood, bro. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And this is like, bro, you have to realize I'm from Pittsburgh, bro. Like, I didn't really realize. Fox like, Chapel. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really realize, like, bro, how, like, fucked L.A. was until, like, kind of after that moment. And, like, that's when I started realizing, like, there's way deeper and darker things. And I started doing bi bigger business. I was like, yo, there's some dark shit that happens here, bro. That, like, people just, like. How many years in? To LA, did that was like, bro. I was dating someone at the time. I was dating. I was dating Liberty at the time. <laughs> Plot bro. thickens. No way. I know exactly who you're talking about yeah. based on, especially the last part. But that is nuts yeah. because that woman also uh, supported one of our friends and had an apartment at 1600 Vine. Yeah. Of you know who I'm talking was it about? Theo? No, it's uh, well that too. <laughs> it was Theo, but it was also Brian Wood. Oh yeah, 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 bro. I remember him. Yeah. yeah so she like nuts, she had bro. like she was she was a sugar mama. Yeah. Bro, she gave me five racks. 
Five racks for yeah for that bro, dope dick in my in my bro like Bank of America. I remember like looking at it and at the time like I wasn't making a lot of money. We we're all fucking out here acting and like trying to make fucking bread. So I'm like, yo, five grand, fuck yeah. And it's not gay. Yeah, like I've I've only gotten approached with gay <laughs> opportunities. <laughs> I have too, bro. I've had people be like, yo, I'll suck your shit for fifty k, and I'm like, nah. Oh, really? The highest I got yeah. was ten. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And I, like I would never take it because you know how like some of the like bro some of those dudes like that we were like surrounded with bro like bro we were always getting preyed upon like when we were in that degen squad like that was the first time going out life. with like Allison Melnick and just like bro, having the free tables bro, and just like I didn't really like it was one of those things where it was just like I didn't realize like friends of ours bro that like did some like shit bro and like. Kids who now are like married with kids, and I'm like looking at you. I'm like, yeah, oh, like you were. That's why, what? dude. I got approached by like multiple people, and like your friends. Like, some of your friends are doing it. Why don't like you bro, remember like, those dinners that they would always do? Like I never went to any of those, bro. Never. No. I didn't want to go to. A I went, one. but like I, I like to eat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. Like when I first went to LA, like that was like so. There was a time where it was so prominent, like where they were just like constantly like. Like, yo, if you come here, like, or like, yo, this prince, like, like 50K, like, I'm like, fuck, 50K sounds nice, but like, no, yeah, absolutely not. It would change your life, bro. It the 10 would have no, changed my I'm life. I'm telling you, it doesn't, bro. I'm telling you, man, it doesn't. Because, dude, I've made, I've made a million dollars in one night, dude, and like, I've blown it fast as fuck. I'm telling you, like, a million dollars will not change your life in any way, shape, or form, especially out here. Well, let's not blow by that. How'd you make a million dollars in one night? Well, it was doing PPE stuff. And also crypto. PB? No. PPE. Like oh, PPE. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wait. Uh, so crypto, how'd you get involved? I made, in I made like like a little over $2 million in 2020 on that. And then I made like about like a million in crypto. And then I've never seen myself, because I didn't come from money. So like I've never seen myself blow money in a Would you blow dumb it on? way. I mean, bro, there was one night I was just out of the fucking club one night in, bro, a bumfuck city, bro, where like it's I don't even think it's you could spend 5K. I dropped 50 racks, bro. I was up till fucking like, dude, these are like stories, man, that I've never like I just don't really share with many people because they're just so disgusting. Let's not show them. Why not share it on camera? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll, we'll share it because like I'm reformed now. So yeah, no, I'll share yeah. some stories in my life that like you know, but like up to like dude, 11 a.m. just with sh like like five to seven strippers, bro, like all night buying bottles of Dom Perignon, like a fucking reject, like in the middle of a bum fuck city. But there was just like three baddies that were there, and I was like, I gotta take down all three of you, like here. So like, let's do it. What's the most girls you've had sex with at once? Oh God, bro. My girl would be so heated if I ever said this. Fuck. You don't have to. You don't have I to. I can't. No, don't. <laughs> okay. I think she she's going to be heated either way and ask you <laughs> <laughs> regardless. Nah, nah, she knows about some shit, but like. Yeah. She knows about some shit, but yeah. That's insane. So what's yeah. all right? So Probably about the same amount of rings <laughs> that the Steelers and uh, the Patriots have won. <laughs> <laughs> this a little game of Clue. <laughs> Something like that. No way, bro. Dude, so I never I'm, up until recently, I had an orgy recently. I've first one. So many, bro. First one, bro. First, first one. one. First one, it was three girls. Wait, it was three girls and two guys. I never had a threesome never, with two I've, girls. I've never had anything with a dude. Ever. I wasn't fucking tugging him off. He but was no, just I'm in just the saying, bedroom with I'm me. I'm just saying I've never had another dude in the bedroom. Really? I, bro, I dated a chick, bro, who literally like it was her thing. Like we would go around to LA and she would find me girls and we would just we'd run them. Really? Yeah. Damn. Where is she now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll happily tell you where she is. Well, right. that's the, what's the craziest LA story besides the one you just told us about the hit? Because that's insane. The fact that, that was... you called his bluff and went to the Mondrian yeah. is insane to Bro, me. She sent me 5K and she's like, you need to show up. And I'm like, all right, say less. So like, and I did you hear back a, from I the knew guy? She had his location and everything like that. No, nah, I never heard back from him after that. So whenever they were kind of getting real rocky, yeah, they're putting a the house on the market and shit like that. Yeah, and I was supposed to be a real estate guy, there, you know. <laughs> but um, craziest story. Ooh, that was pretty bad. But there was one where was one of my buddies, he's the one I invested in this company. I was dating this girl at the time. You know her. Yep. And uh, 
fuck. There's a lot of stories, but this one was pretty good. We were like kind of celebrating and we were just like watching UFC fights, like casual boys night, just us doing a little bit of shrooms, doing a little bit of, you know, a little, a little funny, funny business and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden I was just like, yo, like, let's get some girls over here. And he was like, all right, let's do it. So I made a couple calls. I got like probably like, I don't know, six girls to pull up. And uh, wow, I'm so jealous. <laughs> and uh, like, long story short, bro, <sighs> these girls were just on demon time, and bro, we ran all of them, all of them. We both ran them. You too. And at one point, yeah, like two. So you did do sexual stuff with the guy. So he wasn't. He was in his own room. I was in my own room. Okay. And they would just bounce back and forth. And at one point, they're like, "Why don't we just all do this together?" And I was like, "Nah, I'm not really about that." But I will tell you this: we were both standing up at one point while. The girls were on their knees sucking us up like when we first started. I forgot about that. And he looked over at me and he was like, bro, you got a nice fucking dick. And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you never had a devil's threesome? No. I've only like, I've only hooked up with girls and like other girls. Yeah. Yeah. Would you get mad if your current girlfriend hooked up with a girl without you knowing? Fuck no. You wouldn't get mad? Not at all. Yeah. I wouldn't care. Because <laughs> uh, I would get like I, it's, I would it's the controlling issues from my dad and shit. Like I like so there you go there. That's what it, that's where it comes down to. So you, everyone has traumas. Like my traumas have made me a complete and utter like just like like have no feeling. And yours would make you care. Make make me care so much. Like I literally got mad at my ex because she didn't post me enough. Yeah, I don't care my because girl, I'm my in my girl, head. I'm like, oh wait. My girl she has never, guys in her DMs that she doesn't girl, want to see that she has a boyfriend. My girl never posts me. Ever. Ever. And you don't care? I don't give a shit. Because I also know that she's making a bag on OnlyFans. And you, the image of having a boyfriend you can't do. Just for now, no. And like, I just don't really care. Like, I just, I've never I really care cared. so fucking much. No. I need to stop. It's not. Because then it's just like, again, it puts like... Like my biggest thing that I've realized because I've never been able to trust anyone. Like my best friends are like my friends who like I've trusted for the longest. So yeah. like I look back on like certain things and I've just kind of realized all this, but I look within my relationships. I'm like, I never gave a girl like my full trust. And like, if a girl breaks my trust, bro, in five seconds, I have no problem with being like, all right, fuck this. It's over. Like, you don't want me in these streets, bro. Like, I'm telling you, you don't want me in these streets. So it's like one of those things where it's like, <laughs> it's one of these. Wait, so you can I guarantee if you go to a pack night, say Barney's on a Wednesday night, tonight, I'll be there, 10 p.m. It's karaoke night. When I say there's a line through the parking lot trying to get in, of all ages from 21 to 26, 27, hot ass girls. I'll go for the baddest one. I go there every time and I leave by myself every time. And it's because I don't, I don't know if I'm afraid of rejection Ooh, I or, this one. or it's just, well, I don't know what to say. My usual line, they know, I say it every fucking podcast is, you know, uh, I go up and be like, can you do me a favor and stop looking so pretty? You're and already trying so hard right there. Do you even go up to them? So listen, this is how I do it. If I'm in a scene like that and I'm at a bar. I learned this at a young age. I'm telling you, my high school was fucked, bro. Like, we were all my boys were so competitive with each other. Like, it was just like whoever got the baddest chicks. Like, it was just like if we all did business together, we'd be, we'd have the most successful business in the world, I swear. But everyone's just too competitive and it's too ego driven. So, if I'm in a bar, I'm going to survey just like throughout the night, like when I first get there, like at least like the first like 30 minutes to like 40 minutes, like I'll survey like who, who are the hottest chicks in there. Okay. And then I'll wait to see if anyone else comes in that's like super hot. You can never go talk to too many girls. The second you talk to too many girls, whoever's like one of the hottest chicks is like, you've already talked to like four other girls before me. Like, I got called out the other night for that. So you can't do that ever. I did. You, like, you said that line to my friend over there. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that whatsoever. So then, you know, you give them a little bit like, and again, it's all about eye contact. So like, if I see a girl, like I, I won't talk to girls for like the like first probably like 30 minutes of me going in there. And I would just, I won't really look at any girls either. Like if I see a hot chick, I'll like whatever. And then it's such a game. It is a game. And then once like, I'm like, all right, shit, there's not like no one else is coming here. And like, you're probably the hottest chick here right now. That's when I'll just start looking at them like a bunch. And like, I will legitimately like not stare in a creepy way, but like 
I'll look their way and like I just won't they won't stop looking until they kind of like catch gaze. Once I can kind of see them catching gaze a little bit, then I'm like, all right, cool. Like I know that this is access. Like I can go talk to you. Girls who like will look at you and then be like this, like and put their head down or something like that. <sighs> Nine times out of ten, they have a boyfriend or there's something up. So if I know that and I can sense that, like I'll be like, hey, what's up? And I'll just super like chill and just be like, oh, cool. Like I mean, came over you. You look beautiful. Like just super simple. Like you're gorgeous. Like like I love your fit or whatever it is. And then I'm kind of like, they're like, oh, okay, like, oh, thank you so much. Like, where are you from? I mean, that's the easiest thing. Like, and then you just keep conversation. Do you there. sit with them? Do you do like, a drive by? Do, do like stuff like that. And then you can kind of kind of gauge like where they're at. And like, if a girl is very distant, like I've had a girl who's really like, super distant. I'm like, ah, oh, like, you, you have a boyfriend. And I'm like, yeah, I do. I'm like, oh, you know, he's so lucky. Like, you're so beautiful. And like, you just look at them in the eyes and stuff like that. And you're like, damn, like, yeah, he's real lucky. Like, to have someone like you. And then like, just again, like just kind of like leave it at that and be like, well, I don't want to bother you anymore. And they'll either be like, oh, no, no, no. Like, you can still like talk or whatever. And then I'm like, all right, cool. There's still an in here. <laughs> but, if, but if not, I'm respectful. Like I'll have to sit there and I'll take my L. Like if my L, that's my L, like that's my L. Yeah. And, you know, just be like, damn, like, you know, just like how it is. But like if it's a girl that you like is conversating with you and stuff like that, like, yeah, you kind of go from there. And How do you, you close a girl and bring her back to a place such as where I'm living now, uh, which like the hot tub? Because once you come here, it's obviously like you yeah, said, bro, it's, it's a, a vibe. Little, it's a little vibe. So, so I mean, how do listen, I get a girl? Marco has a dope spot, so you should just pull up. And come <laughs> and just lit. Like I would just come just for like you know fun time. Boys it's all day. about the experience, brother. You give a girl. So like if you can give a girl a good experience, keep it cool and like just like play it smooth. Don't try to be someone that you're not, but like just definitely don't like. The cheesy lines and shit like that like it's just not yeah like they know you're trying too hard right off rip mm -hmm. like it might work but like but here's my thing when i go out i start drinking all i want to do is hang with the boys especially if you make a little trip to the handicap store uh like that's all you don't want to uh, yeah. talk to girl i don't like i want to play beer bong <laughs> yeah i do too but again like i use beer pong and i use those types of things for me to survey the scene more or less Cause I already know that I'm nice as fuck at beer pong. And whoever, <laughs> and whoever I'm playing, I'm gonna wash you. Like post Malone, good luck. I'll beat your ass. Yeah, right, bro. I guarantee. I'll, I'll, we'll play right I'll, after. We'll play after this right now. I guarantee I beat you. I'll run your ass. No, you won't. So anyway, like I'll use that as like a good time to like survey the scene on girls. But bro, it's just really just going up to them and like if they're hot and like you think they're hot, it's like letting them know. And like, obviously, you're beautiful. a specimen. I'm pretty. Uh, I think. As Bro, you should I've been told, pictures. I'm like, generic, not generic. Uh, <laughs> genetic. But, no, gene no, not genetically attractive. Like, uh, objectively handsome. Like, yeah. no one can be like, and I'm not, this isn't trying to sound braggy or anything. No one can be like, I don't see it with him. You know, like, no, no one can be like, you're, you're, you're an ugly dude. dude. Yeah, and you're not an ugly dude either. Exactly. So why am I not having sex more? You care too much. You're too horny. <laughs> there you go. You're beating <laughs> off twice a day. Get off the porn, bro. I'm telling you, the porn fucks your head up. Like I was telling you, bro. That was my next question. What's your favorite porn category? <laughs> like, what's my favorite porn category? So it you do always, watch porn. It was always MILFs, like, growing up. No, it was, like, a state. Was like, it Beverly House? Was MILFs? <laughs> it was MILFs growing up, bro. Like, I loved MILFs, bro. Like, I fucked one of my friend's moms when I was, like, like just coming out of college. Yeah. No way. Yeah, I got ahead from her at the gym. What? Yeah. When you were friend's moms? Yeah, I kind of, like, I kind of, like, got big and jacked and, like, like in college and yeah at the gym she does, does he know i think he knows bro because people have started talking about it and like he was pissed so yeah he knows <laughs> so he, definitely, he definitely knows but he never really said anything to me like if someone bro my mom i'd be like i'd, I'd, I'd hire that mom. guy that tried to kill yeah, you <laughs> exactly i'd be like yo um but his mom and like his and her whatever husband they got divorced so it, like she was kind of just she was married yeah, she was married. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Bro, you have insane stories. Yeah, but I think they were on the verge of like not yeah. really like kind of going through. It. Oh, okay. That makes that makes it better. I mean, what's her name was married too, bro. I know, but you weren't friends with the fucking six year old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, no, I mean, I don't even know what I was saying. Wait, she so wait. Mom. So 
I'm too horny. I have to try not yeah, as Yeah, bro, hard. you're too horny. So first But that's why I do. I go out and don't try. Yeah, you, you But then you, girls don't come up to me. No, you have to it just has to be a strategic approach. I'm telling you, just use the approach of like just don't give too many girls too much attention off rip. Then you when you see a girl that you want, like hone in on her. And like, listen, if you're gonna go for the hottest girl in the bar and you fail, like it just still allows you to go for other girls because it's like they know the other girls know that like, you know, they're not as hot. So <laughs> Who is this? That's my Are we girlfriend. doing on time? An hour. We're an hour right now? Hi, babe. Oh. I'm still on the podcast. Yeah. Put her on speaker. Oh, God. Put her on speaker. You're on speaker on the podcast now. What? You're on speaker. <laughs> <laughs> you're on speaker and we're in the middle of a podcast. Oh, my God, speaker. Yeah, you're on speaker. Anything Say you want hi. To ask Anything you want to ask? Hey, what do you like most about Garrett? What do you like most about Garrett? Besides his all sexiness and beautifulness, like his confidence that has a really good heart, and I'm kind of a teddy bear deep down. How big is his penis? Yeah, he is. He <laughs> acts like a puppy, but like we'll be like watching the Notebook or something. Oh, like, there it comes. Cover. He is full blown. He has gotten. A- Final question. Final question. Uh, how big is his penis inches? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I'm more than satisfied. Oh, oh heard it here first. All right, babe. I got to go. We're in the middle of this. I love you. I'll be back soon. Love you. Bye. All right. Last question. Last question. What's your favorite drug? Ketamine. Why? <sighs> I think for me, when it comes to K, and I really think that it should be something that anyone who has like anxiety, depression, um, if they're just have like PTSD traumas and things like that, like I've never tried a drug that allows me to when I'm having issues mentally, kind of like re hardwire my my like my just like neuro pathways for me to like understand certain things. Like they say that ketamine helps like fire certain neuroplasticity in your brain. And like, if you think about it, like when you're a kid, your neuroplasticity is constantly firing. That's how you start to be like, oh, wow, a chair is a chair. Blue is blue. And you learn so fast as a kid, you can pick up on language and stuff like that. Cause your neuroplasticity is firing like crazy. So for me, like if I'll stop for like two, three months and like, I'm kind of in like a drought or like, I'm just kind of like in a negative headspace, and like, I'll be like, oh, I'm do a little K tonight and like watch a movie. It's the best watching a fucking movie. Really? Oh my God. Yeah. It's on a whole nother level. I'll take you. We'll go to the iPick or something and give you a little K and we'll go watch something. And you just do a little bump of it? Because yeah. there's ketamine therapy. Yeah. And I, for me, like, I'll do that and I'll be like, dang, like, it like will rewire my brain. Like, I'll get out of, like, a negative thought wave. And I'll just, I don't know what it is, but, like, certain things will connect. Even for business, I'll have certain business things I'm thinking about. It will finally connect with me. And, like... I'm just happy, bro. I'm happy. I'm pumped up. Like my energy is so much better. So like really? when I'm with people, they're like, oh, wow. Like it's just like, and I feel like, you know, you radi- radiate a certain energy. You give off a certain energy. Like that energy comes back to you. And like, I'll find it. Like when I'm in, when I'm negative and stuff like that, and I haven't done it for a while, like it will put me in a different place. And like going out, like if I want to stay jacked, bro, and I'm not trying to, you know, like rip one of these bad boys. <laughs> you can't drink bro you're you, you literally can't but like it's one of those things where it gives you like a nice little like slight wave you feel good you can vibe it's not where it's like where it's like snow or like bro i can't get hard if i do blow bro yeah i can't weed it's just like it, weed i get emotional bro like, i'm so emotional like i'm way more emotional i care too much <laughs> I like start to think. I'm start to think like when I was times where I'd think of like, man, like you were such a dick to this girl. You're such a dick to this person. Like you can't, you can't do that. Alcohol, like bro, I'll I'll find the Russian side of me coming out. Like I'll be a just an ass, complete and utter ass. And you like shrooms? Shrooms, I love shrooms. Yeah, I don't like going too deep on shrooms, but like I like shrooms. Like, shrooms, right? you go too deep. You go in like Joshua Tree. You got to be like yeah. with your friends and shit. But like public on shrooms, I think everyone's looking at me. Yeah. Yeah. Jay is just, I'm just, you're chill. You might need it so when you go out, you don't care too much. It helps you disassociate with like certain things. Like certain, you know, situations where you go talk to someone that you don't really want to talk to, whatever it is, like you can just kind of play Joe cool and like you're good. Yeah. 
I gotta stop caring too much. All right, we took too much of your time. I gotta try some K soon. Uh, Garrett, anything before we go? Do you want to plug anything? Where can we find you on socials? <sighs> just Garrett underscore Morosky. Um, no, nothing else, man. This is just in general. This is an awesome production, bro, that you have going on here. If I could say anything to you, man, it would just be to keep going. A lot of people would drop off after their first, you know, like 15, I mean, first three episodes. But like, I mean, they say that once you kind of get over that 21 mark and you catch your groove, like things will start to really pick up. So, this is bro, number 12. So you still got, you know, nine more to go. It's that, it's that business degree. I hate the number 21. So let's just give it 12 more. All right. You're halfway there, bro. 24 right. is my favorite number. Kobe, let's go, baby. Kobe, let's Mom go, baby. That's what you got to have while you do this. You'll be successful. And if you need any brands or anything like that to help sponsor you, whatever it is, let me know. That'd be I'll amazing. You. That'd be amazing. You need yeah, a new I, energy I got, drink. Fuck right. I got one right off. I got one right off rip for you. Really? Yeah. Let's go. Thank you, Gabby Morosky, Purple Bands, Akati, and LJ for producing this bad boy. Smoochy Town coming to a city near you. <laughs> Just kidding. We're staying in LA. Thanks, guys. I've been on the road. I've been doing shows. Now we ain't stage. Remember sleeping on the floor. Still at the gas station when the time's cold. In the kitchen, hostel trying to flip it out the stove.